Good afternoon to you. Many years since you and I last spoke. How would you rate the province of Gauteng? How is it dealing with the situation so far? I think that under the circumstances, they are, they are really doing very well. Uh, one has to take into account that, firstly, not only is it an epicenter, but it's also a very dense uh, area. I think when we look at areas like Rosebank, Santin, Bryanston, uh, parts of Swane, we don't really realize how uh, uh, the density uh, in the province, in areas like Alexander, Hillbrook, Sunnyside, uh, Beachwood. So I think, you know, to an extent that we have not yet seen a really explosive situation in those areas, I would say we are handling it very well. But the issue is hopefully uh, taking steps to ensure that we don't see an explosion from that area. Secondly, I'm hoping that uh, really beginning from um, mid uh, next week, they will literally uh, ensure they've got roadblocks between the parts of, um, of, of Devon, Mpumalanga, uh, Limpopo, and Northwest, so that everyone who may have gone away to Limpopo, to the, all of these other provinces, uh, just before the lock lockdown, when they come back, they are screened uh, as well, because we'll really have to do a lot more to avoid this thing. And finally, I'm saying they're really doing very well, because if one looks at the resources that Houten has and the population growth, there's always been a, a mismatch in those areas, yes. I mean, informal settlements has also led to some sort of changes you'd never have expected. I think Doe Stain last week gave several hundred million rand to, with food parcels. He basically essentially said, I'll make sure that no one in Deep Slurt starves. You'd never have thought that that would happen before this. No, no, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it is not really something that one would uh, ever thought, you know, we're going to go into that particular area. One of the biggest challenges is that with schools closed, you've got kids who um, used to get their only meal uh, at school. They are not able to get that. You've got uh, families which, while they do receive, you know, uh, social grants, some of the guys that used to work, they're not working. They may not get UIF. So one of my biggest worries, and this is not just about housing, but across the country is that absent a real transformatory economic uh, package, uh, you know, we're going to really see an explosion of uh, many more people who live without food who are very hungry. I do want to, I'm going to come back to social grants in just a moment, but the issue of the school nutrition scheme, I think around the country, I think it's 9 million children get a meal at school. They're not getting that at the moment. The Western Cape Provincial Government is trying to give children a meal. It says it's able to do that with proper social distancing. The National Education Department's been quiet on that. The Gauteng Premier, David Mokura, your successor, has said that uh, they can't do it in Gauteng. Do you think they should try it? I really think that to an extent that it is uh, possible, they should uh, look at it. Obviously, each area must be looked at in its own uh, context. So I wouldn't uh, say that they must say, well, everybody come back to school. Because remember, there are some kids who go to school far away from where, where they live. So it may be a little bit different from some parts in the Western Cape where most of these kids go to school near where they are, you know. So at, at least housing has got that disadvantage. But to an extent that it were to be people who live near those areas, I would work out uh, situations which, with social distances, with disinfectants, one try and do that. Because in any case, what is the difference between uh, giving those kids while they are there in their respective schools with uh, going to call a number of people to give them um, uh, food parcels. It's really one and the same. But I understand that uh, there will be kids in deep slot who, if you were to look at a school, maybe they're going to a school somewhere in Midland, and therefore it will be difficult for them to be get served uh, you know, in that area. So you may also want to use 
to an extent that uh, they have uh, information about this quantile, uh, <laughs> excuse me, uh, schools and all of that, they could be able to say, we know where most of these kids are. So if we go to um, Bipsluot or Dobsonville, we are not just going to go there and give everybody. We're going to go there and, and target those families who would be coming from, uh, I mean, whose children would have been at a school in Centurion, Brighton, or wherever. Um, Gauteng is also the biggest economy in the country, the biggest economy in Africa, I should say. How worried are you about the economy during the lockdown? And uh, would that mean that you would start to look at ways of lightening some of the regulations? Well, you know, I, I understand where the president is coming, is coming from. And, and uh, I've really been one of his critics, but I think I understand where on this matter of the lockdown they are coming from. I can understand the need to ease, uh, you know, working in terms of the economy. But if I was in Gauteng and I was the premier and I was David Makura, I would be saying to the president, yes, it's important that we must, um, you know, ease the, the lockdown. But it may be that in Gauteng or in certain areas, we may even need to be able to tighten it. So I wouldn't have a blanket well, loosen it up, lift it up. It will have really to be looked at area by area because I think, yes, we must save the economy, but even more we must be able to save, to save uh, the people. So we we'll need to be able to find a bit of balance. But the housing economy is going really to be, to be hardest hit because, you know, uh, all of, of, most of the tourists, that uh, the province relies on, whether they are for diplomats, whether they are for conferencing, or people just passing by to go to Limpopo and other areas for tourism, all of these hotels are closed. Even if you open them tomorrow, it doesn't mean that people are going to suddenly come in because I don't think they're going to be opening up the skies uh, uh, as well. You know? So it's really going to be a long, uh, a long haul. Um, there's a big meeting tomorrow. Cabinet, we understand, might take a decision, uh, well, about SAA, but they might also take a decision around social grants, certainly some kind of economic stimulus plan, but there might be a move to increase social grants, the child support grant, by, say, 500 rand a month for the next three or six months. Would you support that? Do you think we need to take money from other places and give it to child support grants in this moment? In fact, my view is that the um, uh, Treasury and the Minister of Finance have been the missing link in their response to, to this COVID-19. That they not only do we need a, a social grant, whether it's temporary, you know, as a basic income grant, it's really that you've got to look at there are many people, even if you increase the social grants to those who currently receive it, what happens to people who are between 17 and 59? who are not uh, disabled, who don't have children, who have never worked, who can never draw from the URF. You've got to look at how do you assist those kind of people. Secondly, I think they will really need to be able to assist a number of businesses, not only small and medium enterprises, because I think those will be hard hit, but I think even big businesses, when they, when they restart, it's going to be a difficulty. So, yes. Uh, I would support that, but I think that on its own may solve uh, half of people who may be going hungry. But the real issue is, the, is that we've got to restart the economy. And I think if Peter works simply on the basis that says, well, we had so much money, I will reallocate, but we are not going to increase the issue of the, of the budget deficit over a particular period, and then repay it back, then uh, we are going nowhere very slowly.